um, in the meeting, and obviously others wish to say something. First of all, it is quite an amazing turnaround in Greek politics and indeed politics all across Europe. And uh, having been in Greece for the last elections, not the one last week, and uh, doing a rally with Alex outside of Athens, um, we reminisce about this particular meeting and uh, he said he'd been here at the two previous elections. The first election he came to, there were six people at the rally. <laughs> that was the four people that came with him and one member of the public. <laughs> and then the next time he came, there were 200 people. Um, that was the three people that came with him and the 196 of the public who attended the rally. And then the one I was at he came to, there were 2,500 people hanging off the balconies all around the village square. And he said, if that's a measure of how we're growing, let it be and let it grow. And it was a, an amazing experience for me. I uh, had the opportunity today to ask David Cameron about the Greek elections. Um, I think we should thank John Burke for this, but he called me to ask the question. He can't even know what I was going to ask, but he did. Um, and uh, so I asked David Cameron if he had had an opportunity to put a call through to Alexis and uh, congratulate him on his election and uh, uh, wish him well. And I was actually quite surprised that, um, well, I went on to point out that the Greek people had rejected austerity, rejected the politics that brings about poverty for the masses and wealth for the few, and rejected the destruction of all their public services. And he should bear this in mind in his own economic thinking. I'm not quite sure if David Cameron's economic thinking extends to these concepts, but uh, he did say he put a call through to Alexis, asked him what the long-term economic strategy for Greece was, and Cameron didn't tell us what reply he had given. I can only speculate what the reply was. And then went on to say, this is quite bizarre, I didn't realise David Cameron had a sense of humour, and now I know he does, because he said he was very happy to help the Greek government in dealing with issues, get this, of tax transparency and how they'd be prepared to help them in the issues of tax collection. <laughs> so, for an unprofessional stand-up comic, isn't that bad, really? Think Vodafone, think Starbucks, think Cayman Islands, think Luxembourg and Amazon, think Monaco. There's quite a lot of choice here. And, um, <laughs> There's plenty of material we can work on there, stand-up comics beware. But the victory in Greece is really far more significant in many, many ways. Because there's been lectures, and upon lecture upon lecture for years, that the Greek people are somehow or other responsible for those that avoided tax, somehow or other responsible for corruption, and that they have to suffer by the destruction of public services, high levels of unemployment, privatisation, and endless instructions as to how they run their economy. And the PASOK government that um, was confronted with this crisis some years ago uh, went off to Brussels and took instructions and came back and carried out those instructions and went back and took new instructions and went out and carried out more instructions and went back and forth. And it became uh, like a sort of Shakespearean tragedy. Every time you do something, you've got to do a bit more. It's like medieval bloodletting, where you've let a pint, but you should have let a quart. And when you let a quart, you should have let a gallon. The only problem is it might kill the patient in the process. What happened was massive destruction, massive poverty, and a government and a strategy that wasn't just about austerity, that was about reconfiguring Greek society, about destroying industrial relations, destroying workers' rights, destroying public health services, destroying education, and destroying everything else. That is the price of austerity all across Europe, the reconfiguration of our society to represent something like the mid-1930s. That is what is on the agenda. So the victory of Syriza is a lesson to all those that carried out the European Union and European Central Bank instructions. And it's up to us to show immediate practical solidarity with this new government in Greece in the course that it is embarked upon and the course in which the Greek people have embarked upon. Make no mistake about it, 
Greece has been an economic laboratory for the European Central Bank, the European Union, and the International Monetary Fund. Seeing if they can do what they did to Chile in the 1980s to an advanced economy in Europe, that is really what is at stake here. So let's get behind that economy, behind the Greek government and what it's trying to do. And the message I would give to my own party, to the labour movement in this country, and to the trade unions in this country is, and if you offer people austerity, they don't want it, don't like it, don't think it solves their problems. If instead you offer them hope of decent wages, secure jobs, good working conditions, an end to fees in education, there's so many good things you can offer them. And the principle of a health service universe for free at the point of use, delivered by publicly employed workers, people get excited about that, support it, want to march down that road together to achieve it. If you don't deliver it, you know what's waiting in the corner. In, the Greece, in Greece, it's Golden Dawn. In Austria, it's a different form of fascist. In Germany, it's a different form of fascist. In Belgium, in France, in Spain, in this country, it's the EDL, it's the BNP, it's UKIP, it's all those racist forces. <laughs> that unity in strength, not allowing the far right to divide us and attack minorities, migrants, refugees or anyone else. It's that sense of international solidarity of people from wherever they come to wherever they're trying to go, working together in solidarity rather than looking for scapegoats that can only lead us down to the unthinkable. And so I think this victory in Greece is a victory for all of those who fought so long in Greece, who fought against the Nazi occupation, who fought against the military coup, who fought against the military government, who stood up for trade union rights when the fascists were in control in Greece. Well done them. Us, our joy, our strength, our solidarity, our hands are open to them. Thank you very much.